Good evening and welcome to the Select Board meeting of Monday, August 20th, 2018. Uh, we're meeting at a bit of an unusual time. We're meeting at 5.30. Our actual call to order time is uh, 5.32. Um, tonight we're going to have a fairly uh, quiet meeting, I guess is the best way to describe it. Um, we're in the midst of doing the uh, town manager's evaluation, and so tonight is when we're going to read each other's evaluations and then work on a composite um, evaluation of the town manager. We also have some other business uh, to take into account, and so we may take that in, uh, in order first, unless there's something anyone needs to announce or, or to mention regarding the agenda. Um, but once we finish with that, then we will uh, begin the reading, which is a long period of people reading through five different uh, evaluations. So, um, so we'll start with our action discussion item, which is a notice of intent to convert use of land. Uh, W.D. Coles Incorporated MGL 61 Section 8 Parcel 3C13. We took this up last time. There were three different parcels that were under consideration. I guess one is actually really ready for our action. The other two, I think, needs more. They're a little more subtle in, in what needs to be done uh, relative to that. Um, do you have anything to share with us on this I at all? I don't. Okay. Um, I don't think anything's changed from last time. I think it's just a matter of we have motion language that's uh, been run through the uh, town council press, as it were. To, to make it um, appropriate for what our need is. So if someone would like to read the motion. Yes. I just read it quickly myself and it is, it does have more information and more detail than last, what we struggled with last week. Okay. Um, I move that the select board not exercise the right of first refusal granted to the town under Mass General Law Chapter 61 to purchase a point zero nine six acre parcel of land located off Leverett Road being a portion of property described in deeds recorded with the Hampshire Registry of Deeds in book 1213 page 346 and in book 774 page 411 and to be sold to W.D. Coles Inc. to Alexei and Svetlana Peshkov for consideration of $2,000 and to execute a notice of non-exercise to evidence said release. Second. And we have a second. Is there further discussion? Yes. I wonder, I realize we had council work on it this time since they hadn't had a chance last time, but I would like to insert the M for Mass General Law. I know that in legal documents they often skip it, but. I did because she said I, I did it verbally. Right. So you want right. to awesome. mm -hmm. Google thing. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Just one absent, so four zero one absent. So next on our agenda is the town manager performance evaluation review of individual evaluations on your desk tonight and soon to be released to the uh, packet. Uh, are each of our individual um, evaluation documents a, uh, a composite of just the, uh, the ratings that we did and then a draft with the word draft on it, thankfully, of a memo that I wrote that's trying to bring all five of those into a uh, sensible whole, which we will discuss. But um, we'll start by reading. Uh, hopefully Mr. Wald will be joining us soon. Um, is there anything else anyone wants to mention relative to those? If not, then I think thrilling television that is us reading. I guess the only question is uh, just to confirm the process that you've gone through in prior years. I assume you've met with the town manager. We have. We have. Um, we met uh, at the end of the week after these were due um, and discussed them. A little bit, and so you know, he's aware of the content of all of those. He has had them um, pretty much the same length of time I have. Um, he's looked through them. Um, okay. Thank you. That's an interesting page. A stray uh, carriage return. So I think. Good. 
That is the one advantage of being the chair. It's the only one. It was the David advantage. <laughs> it's the only advantage to being the chair when it comes to the eval process.
Oh, wait, I was going to vote against this representation. Too late.
She brought them. Just can't have plastic straws. Do I look like I need a fork? <laughs> Providing plasticware. Yeah, they're good, but nothing.
Yes. I was confirming it was Jane because I haven't read there. <laughs> there were words. And we were discussing pizza.
others. I won't say that we can do many times.
well and separate from pizza, are you, <laughs> you can keep eating pizza. I don't want to halt that process at all. Um, all right, so it's, uh, it seems like everybody's managed to make their way through all of these. Um, so, um, so I attempted in, in putting together the, uh, the composite in the memo to try to capture as best I could sort of as many of the ideas and thoughts that people had about the different goals that we had set forward and uh, I counted them. There are 58 different things we were making ratings on. Um, so it's a pretty substantial number of things um, and tried to make some reference to almost every one of those uh, in the summary. I did find a typo on page nine where there should be an R instead of a, it's not you, it's your. Um, so I'll definitely get that corrected. Uh, but I'd love to hear what, what people think about um, the evaluation generally, specifics, the memo itself. I think any of those topics are completely appropriate. I'm sorry, you said who was the typo? On page nine. In the, uh, the paragraph that's, that's uh, above the dotted line, third one above the dotted line, the board was evenly split relative to you performance. Ah, right. One of those words that's not the right word. Right. It's a word, but not the correct <laughs> one for that spot in that sentence. It's the possessive, but. Yes. I have, uh, on page four, I just, I think you might want to substitute a different word just because it clanged when I saw it. But that, I swear it's the only wordsmithing thing I'll ask about. I didn't hear what On page four, paragraph three, previous to her retirement just sounds weird. But okay, pick a different word. Or keep it, but prior. Um, it's another PR word, it's fine. And then just in terms of factually, on page five, Mm -hmm. The fourth paragraph from the bottom about affordable housing. Yep. Um, you phrase it differently in your, well, we all phrased it slightly differently in our evaluations, but in this text, I don't think it's really accurate to say that our SHI, that our SHI has increased by 26 units, and I'm in fact not even sure that we only get to count 26, because sometimes we get to count more. Oh, right, that might... We might count the whole and thing. And so I, um, I, I just think maybe you want to just use the phrasing from somewhere else rather than trying to make it seem like it's that direct. But maybe Ms. Kruger has I a better could just way take to phrase out that, it. I could just take out <coughs> by 26 units and just say increasing has resulted in SSJ. That would work. Increasing. Yeah. So I could just follow up. I, I understand the words you're saying. I think that we, over the years, worked really hard to stick with the same broad categories and have different things that we called out underneath them very specifically. Um, back in the day, we didn't necessarily call out the subsidized housing inventory at all. 
as being particularly relevant or just buried it within the rest of it. So, but I totally hear. Here's. I totally hear what you're saying in terms of broadening it, not not because the broad topic isn't therefore getting enough attention because the two underlying things are too specific. Has we to wanted to make sure there was something specific as opposed to just the broad topic, but that then prevented that from being. So I, I'm starting to make notes on evaluation tips for the future, and I hope others are too, but um, I put that SHI is not, and being that specific is not what we should limit the affordable housing focus to. It should have more able to be discussed than that fact. Well, and just since we're going to talk about affordable housing, I think there's there's affordable ha housing with capital A as far as measurable for things like SHI, but there's lots of other measures of affordability that we can promote and, and need in town as well. Right. Mr. Wall. Just on that, I mean, one of the problems is that these things aren't always within the town manager's control, so it's difficult because they want the town to advocate for these things and to some extent the manager can advocate, but there's very little, you know, producing mid-priced ranch houses is not in his wheelhouse, right. so. He's gonna take up a second job. Yeah. Which is actually a segue to a general comment that I have. <coughs> it's sort of been on my mind all the years I've done these valuations, which means all the years that I've been on the select board. We set forth a very ambitious set of goals for our managers, which I've always viewed is to be our priorities, uh, things we would like to see accomplished and uh, we'd like to see progress towards all of them. Um, but I think that it's unrealistic to expect that we're going to be able to make progress on all of them for varieties of reasons. One is, is that they are so ambitious. And the second is that uh, in the end, the manager Whoever the manager may be, there's only one person, and there's a limit to how much can be accomplished. And, it, and it's important somehow that that gets recognized. And I've always felt like, in the end, we really do recognize it, um, but it's a fairly nuanced thing that we're doing as we're passing this torch onto <coughs> the body. important that we somehow engage that conversation and I and so I wonder whether there should be something in the general cover memo that uh, Mr. Slaughter has written that kind of alludes to this general topic of whether sort of just recognizing the uh, extent of what is there and the recognition that you do as much as you can and as many as you can and that is an important measure for us but that you can't do it all no one can do it all yeah i would say on that um you know i, I wrote in in the sort of summary part of, of mine it said every year has its unforeseen challenges and obstacles mm -hmm. which prevent us from reaching or even making progress on some of our goals. Um, so that was, in, in a sense, my one sentence <laughs> attempt to sort of mm -hmm. uh, recognize that there's, you know, there's a lot of things we ask for. I, I'm always impressed, um, both with Mr. Bachman and, and past managers, in, in how much, pro you know, for all the things we write down and ask them to do, <laughs> how much progress gets made on how many things. Um, and it's, it's really quite impressive in that regard, the, the volume that gets done. And, and I recognize, and you, you've said this in any of your, in your self-review and your, and your mid-year report to us, that you know, it, it's a team of people that are doing the work. But nonetheless, you know, you're, you're guiding that group of folks through that process and, and you know, delegating those tasks and, and uh, trusting them to get things accomplished. And so I'm always really you know, um, pleased and impressed by the number of these things that get attended to in a pretty significant way every year, Mr. Wall. I, mean, I think you addressed that also in passing at several points in your excellent summary. You know, because I'm not. I mean, there's a quite a range of opinion, you say, and 
And the thing that, I would just, that always just strikes me about these things is that, I mean, partly depends on how much caffeine you've had or how much sleep you've had or what mood you're in, but that even if we give different rankings according to the boxes, we're all often pretty saying much saying the same thing. So it could be that something hasn't gotten done because we're overloaded or because the staff aren't there or something isn't happening or there's just too much on the plate. And so depending on one's point of view, one could write down, maybe you're not commendable, it's satisfactory, needs improvement or not if inf information. So that's, I mean, I think that's a good thing that we're always pretty much on the same wavelength. Even if we have different rankings, if you look at the pros or if you have the extended conversation, we're seeing the same kind of things and maybe judging differently. I don't know if this is a point to talk about the general categories, but one thing that strike, you know, always strikes me like when I've done the thing and not the year before, that either the number of the categories or the wording is problematic because, you know, to me, satisfactory sounds like the grade school report card where you kind of showed up and did stuff but didn't really get an A. Uh, you know, commendable sounds like it's good, but you know, it, it's, it, it seems to be that if you know, if we had five categories, you know, like really, you know, outstanding or whatever. I could, the problem is we expect good service and we get it from our town staff, but somehow the satisfactory, commendable <coughs> thing always seems a little bit difficult to me, whether because the numbers of categories or the wording, and more, I don't know if more granularity would be helpful or would just complicate the whole task more than it needs to be. Ms. Kruger. Uh, point, because um, I afterwards made a couple notes. Um, sometimes if one year something is like really a crisis, let's say student behavior, mm -hmm. you know, there's <clears throat> that, and actions have been taken to mitigate and right. come up with new things, then you get a commendable. But if nothing external is really, you know, all the systems have been put in place and everything's going along smoothly, then you get a satisfactory. Mm -hmm. Because, so that's just, the, that's the nature of the beast. I mean, I wrote in my narrative, you know, it's sort of frustrating to make the boxes work, but there aren't a lot of choices. Cause, so I realized some of the satisfactories are because the job is getting done, but there's nothing extraordinary to respond to, and so you're not gonna get a commendable because there's like not a big hoopla, like a, you know, some crisis where other things that have come up that weren't really even mm -hmm. in our goals that I think we all mentioned, like the healthcare trust and the zero energy bylaw and working on the marijuana right. I mean, there's a bunch of things we couldn't have anticipated mm -hmm. <clears throat> per se a year ago. So this goals are kind of our map of, as Andy said, what's important to us to track, but they don't always work for commendable, satisfactory. So it's, there's always, I'm always frustrated with doing it and I don't know what the, that there's better ways. But I, to Andy's point earlier, Doug, about um, kind of was like your concluding sentence. You might want to, in the preface to your, uh, this is really like a letter to the public as, and to a future council, and to ourselves and to the manager to put something in about, we recognize that nobody is gonna do all of these all the time because it's a very ambitious set of things and we're reflecting what we identify as priority priorities in a certain snapshot of time when we develop the rules. So I thought you already did that in paragraph three of your first page. But if people want that beefed up, I don't object to that, but I thought that was exactly what that was saying. If you want it made ever more clearer, feel free, but I thought in that the, adequately. The third paragraph it. or yep. the fourth? The third. Just like word recognized. Don't think it hurts to beef it up a little. But if you want to, I'm, I'm just not sure you want to repeat. I'm not saying. I'm saying don't put it somewhere else in here as well. Add just it beef to there. that up. Yeah, it should right. be near the beginning. If you want to beef that up, went, add it there. I went back and forth about adding another sentence or so to that paragraph, <laughs> or not, and ended up not. But I will. I'm hesitant to quote myself too directly. <laughs> you know, no. I could just You're give you mine and, and call it a yeah. day, that's but that seems a little, uh, no, I a think little uh, no. not toward the uh, the uh, the. Uh, I think you should use the sentence you yeah. used. You feel free to just <laughs> tack it on there. Yeah. I think that works perfectly well. Change the font, make it really obvious. <laughs> I thought you did a really good job on the composite. Doug, it's really yes. hard. I, I really don't have any issues. And say I won't miss doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. just I mean, I think it's a valuable thing that we do. I, I really do, and and I think it hopefully provides uh, the manager with with you know um, 
you know, proper feedback and, and help as far as, you know, framing his, his uh, work, whether it be in the coming months or years or whatever, but, but, uh, but it is not an easy or fun thing to do, but. Actually, it's a topic I think it'd be good to return to at the end of the discussion because it really segues into what is our recommendation for the council on a process that would work in a 13-person body. And uh, it crossed my mind a few times when I, we were I, uh, this. I'm like, wow. I, uh, I so I think we should return to it, but not until we've finished yeah. the central business here. Yes. So skipping over all those comments, and, 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 and I just have to push back a little bit, Mr. Steinberg, on the unrealistic expectations. And having been doing this particular form or format um, twice as long as you've been doing it. Um, Ooh, pull I've, rank. Yes, I did. <laughs> all those years that, well, if we're going to talk about all those years, then I'm going to double them. Um, and I do think that up until this point, although it's extremely hard to work with in many respects for the things we bring up every year, I think it has been an interesting point to get us to this point where five people can say, here's the whole universe of things our community cares about. Some years you're going to be able to focus on some things and some years not. And I think it's totally reasonable that we say, gee, this needs more attention, but you know, obviously you're doing this other stuff over here that's doing really well. <clears throat> but to just throw out a number of things in hopes that there will be this nice, tight little four goal thing that will then meet everybody's expectations is something we can talk about process-wise for recommendations for the next group, especially since there's so many more of them and we obviously can't use this format. We would never recommend this format to 13 of them. But I think that's part of where it came from is because, well, I know it's part of where it came from because when I originally got on the select board, there were people who each wanted to write their own completely separate evaluation of the manager and based on no shared goals. And so that really wasn't going to work. And so in order to sort of encompass everyone's feelings about everything, we ended up with this ginormous thing that realistically no human being can do every aspect every year it's just how does it ebb and flow over the years so i think that's something that we'll want to explain to the council like like that's how that happened but you don't want to do it this way <laughs> like find another way to try and address some of those things because this way and is not it's barely worked for the five of us to have this humongous group of things and the amount of time that this town manager and the ones prior have had to spend to self-evaluate is also a huge investment of time in addition to doing the actual work itself. You know, I, I was not suggesting anything about the goals themselves because I think that you've stated already so clearly I probably I don't really need to restate it why there are that number of goals. Um, it's the more public recognition as a part of our evaluation, but more importantly, our uh, recognition to our manager that we have this large number of goals and we have to be realistic about our expectations and uh, that uh, manager has to be realistic about his expectations um, so that there's not frustration built on either side by an implication that you get, that every one of them has to be in a, you know a top of the chart because I don't think that that's you know just not humanly possible um, and it's not possible because the town doesn't have the resources to do all of it. Just to um, return a little bit for uh, the, one of the things Mr. Wald said, that even though we may rate differently from our different perspectives, I thought the issues and the topics and the challenges that we noticed were really similar. And, and so in that way, I felt comfortable with our review. Of course, we all get the same slice of information. You know, We're here on Monday nights. We get the reports. We get the emails. So 
we don't know, you know, there's some things I shouldn't and wouldn't really know enough about to evaluate, you know, what goes on in, in the department level. But in terms of our role and vantage point, it seemed like we did pretty much touch on the same things. And so that was, you might have noticed that when you did your composite. Uh, the, the themes were really similar. Right. There were a few cases where someone recalled a particular thing and others didn't, or vice versa, but mm -hmm. more often than not, we're recalling similar things and using this as examples of, of uh, you, know, you know, working toward or meeting goals. Um, so that, in that sense, it's, you know, possible to sort of even do the, the composite because there is some alignment there. If, if we were in five completely different directions, this would be probably, you know, twice as long and half as clear. <laughs> um, were there other suggestions about content in the in the in the memo itself? I mean, I do want to take advice from you guys and and make edits as necessary to to clean that up. I'll certainly you know <clears throat> add a little bit to that uh, front page to to enhance that paragraph a little bit. But I didn't know if there were any other. Um, comments relative to content or typographical errors or anything else for that matter. I don't take any and all commentary on form and structure and content and well I, I don't know if it belongs in the intro, but every time every year we go through this and there was a year we didn't, which was the year that Mr. Bachman started, so Mr. Steinberg, you didn't do this every single year. This one. Um, that very few people have to have their personnel evaluation done in public on TV. It's awkward for us. It must be. I can only imagine awkward for the manager. And um, I don't know if it makes sense to recognize that, but it's particularly um, challenging. Something process. Very few people have. To. I mean, personnel reviews are hard enough. I never liked them either side of the table. And this is just, you know, we've gotten used to it. We've formalized it. It's a particularly peculiar way to talk about somebody's job performance. So, and at some point tonight, I'd like to hear from Mr. Bachman if any of this was helpful or resonated. Or so I know that's going to come up. So. It's interesting you say that, uh, Ms. Krieger, because um, when I was, uh, doing a little bit of assistance to the Charter Commission back in that days. Uh, I actually had some conversations with people in elsewhere about evaluation processes of managers because that was a topic that was of particular interest to the Charter Commission. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had a, I have a friend who teaches in the, uh, public administration program at the University of Kansas, which is a fairly large, well-known program that touches a lot of states around the country. I had the discussion with him, and he was commenting, without my having to prompt it, he just knew about it, that Massachusetts is one of the few states that has this anomalous procedure that it has to be in public that most states do not. And uh, that uh, he did cite a couple of examples, but he said when I was talking about what would, what, what would you recommend as a good procedure, for all of his expertise and his work in a number of different states, he kind of threw his hands in the air <laughs> because he didn't really have any grand insights as to how we deal with this very peculiar set of circumstances that's thrown to us uh, by our legislature. Um, and when I spoke with uh, the member of a city council in another state and uh, asked how they did the process, of course I instantly realized in the conversation that there was a stupid question to even ask because of this very fact. Perhaps it's based in Britannical roots and 
putting people in stocks to embarrass them in front of the whole town or something, but you know, it has that feel, does it? <laughs> yes. Ms. Along Burke. those lines, maybe we could, um, maybe you could just insert a sentence, and it doesn't even have to be long. But in between, on page one, one, two, three, four, five, in between paragraphs four and five, because we we talk about you can't get in paragraph three. We talk about you can't get everything done. Then it's art and science, <laughs> and then by the way, it's in public, and and truly, I don't. No one else faces this. I mean. The president of the United States, you know, doesn't have a goal set that's agreed to by anyone that then he gets raided on. I mean, all kinds of crazy things happen, but I mean, nobody else does Chancellor, this. Nobody has this to doesn't do this. happen in front of shareholders. I mean, it's just, it's insane when you really think about it. So I do think it is worth, because there are a lot of people out in the community who are newly engaged in learning about what we're doing here and may not fully appreciate that, that that's just not how it works anyplace else, like you said, with your friend who, who's experienced it elsewhere. School superintendents are the... That's it. ...are the two, you know, town managers and school superintendents in Massachusetts, and it is an extraordinarily public process. So, yeah, mentioning something about that I think would be really valuable. Okay. And it has its advantages in terms of transparency and, and right. public information, but it also has a downside. is an observation I was when I was putting the sort of you start with the easy stuff when you do this so I was putting together the sections near the back and <clears throat> the section where it talks about the evaluation process information so you know I'd read this in the charter but I hadn't in a while and I look and it's a single sentence about the evaluation the town council shall conduct an annual review for the purpose of assessing the town manager's performance that's it good luck to and so I'm not saying that's good or bad I just was shocked at how how brief it was relative to what we have, which is, you know, much more precise and, you know, again, good and bad about both of those. It gives them some latitude to sort of form their own uh, methodology, which will have to work with as many people as they have. But anyway, to, yes. to follow up on that for one of the con Mr. Steinberg may have been involved in more of these conversations, but one particular conversation I had with several members of the Charter Commission was that they it started out longer and then they tried to say things that actually didn't comply with open meeting law. <laughs> and so then it was like, you know what, just make it shorter. <laughs> and then deal with whatever current rules there are moving forward. And so that's part of the reason, whereas the Town Government Act, I, I still will say, the Town Government Act is like poetry in mm. comparison to the Charter. Town Government Act is much shorter, it was honed over many more years. And so it's not surprising that the, you can't necessarily just draw an arrow from right. one to the other and have it make sense. Right. But yeah, they were trying to avoid getting in trouble. <laughs> so they were right. sure. No. Well, you know, it, it's it's like they talk about the sort of length of, of different documents and sort of, you know, state constitutions generally have been revised a number of times, but they on average have 40,000 words in them, whereas the U.S. Constitution has like a few thousand, you know. Gettysburg Address was less than 275 words, you know. So it's sometimes brevity is uh, for the best in those things. Um, so unless there's other comment on this, I'm happy to make those couple of additions and, and try to have those prepared for us for our Friday meeting. Um, Mr. Bachman, did you have any sort of comment or? He's had two hours to just say. <laughs> <laughs> A little more than that, but he said to on camera. Yeah. So I just want to thank you for your work. I mean, it's an arduous process. You're right about that. It's, I think it's by necessity, it has to be transparent. It's important for the public to see you doing your work and for you to be holding me accountable. Um, I think you've been considerate in how you've approached it. Um, you've been frank in your assessments. Um, and, I, and, I, and I found a lot of the comments very constructive um, and getting direction and more clarity about what you want to see me do better is helpful to me. And when I was reading it, um, it, it I found it oddly exhilarating. And, um, and mostly because I was thinking, oh, there's more opportunity here. I think for like most people, I tend to concentrate on the things that I'm comfortable with, that I'm in my comfort zone. So I keep focusing on that. And then there's certain things that 
I think the board's job is to yoke around and say, yeah, well, look at this too, and, you're, and I, you haven't paid enough attention. It might be because it's outside my comfort zone, or there's a lot of reasons why the things that you've identified, could, we could go through them, um, you know, timing wasn't right or whatever it was, but I think that there's, there's a, a conversation to be had there. Um, so um, it, was, it was nice to hear the things that you felt like I was doing well. Um, it's important for me to hear the things that I just missed that I, I might have a blind spot to, and I was talking about this earlier today with some colleagues, um, that we all you know, have that, and that that's, it's useful to have someone say, you gotta pay attention to this. Um, so I, I think that um, you know, while this may not be the model for the incoming council, I think, it's, I think you, you know, in addition to the public as your, your memo, which is really a lot, it's a work of art to pull all this together into very few pages you had to pull it into, um, that you're able to, that it's a, it's a conversation or it's a letter to the public, but also to the incoming council because they're gonna go back and look mm -hmm. at this and say, how did they do it? How, did, how are we gonna do it? And this is gonna be a real model for them. Um, so, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's a, it's, it, it takes an enormous amount of time by a lot of people to pull this off. And, and the, but I think the important piece of it that, um, is that uh, you take it very seriously. And I, set, I think that really sets a tone for the entire organization that, um, that you set a standard for how you want performance evaluations to be looked at by your staff. So I think that that's a, that's a your, the seriousness of purpose you bring to this endeavor is really important to it, because it engages me in saying we need to ramp up our um, performance review because I think that that's, because um, you've set the example that this is a really high priority thing and you expect, your expectations are, are, are high like that. Um, so I appreciate the amount of time that you put into it. I know it's, it's the last thing you want to do when you, when it's 10 o'clock at night and you're like, now I have to do this thing. Um, but it's not something that any of you have dashed off, I can tell by reading your evaluations. So um, just want to thank you for that. And uh, uh, the one thing I uh, have found oddly clarifying, not oddly, but in interestingly uh, clarifying, just clarifying, uh, is when you say we really want this to happen, that when you have fewer goals, there's a lot of assessments on, on here. There's 58 different things, as, as the chair said. But if you, uh, as a board, said there are three things we w really want to see done this year, whatever it is, or the council, because there's so many, you can't, it's hard to say, but you say, like, these are the things we really want done. That would be really helpful because uh, the board articulating that and having, you know, when you're part of an organization, you should be able to, to enunciate what your, um, what your goals are for the organization, and everybody in the organization should say that. And we have lots of values that we can, can talk about, but if we said, you know, whatever the goal is that you said is, these are our top three, five, whatever it is, priorities, and everybody in the town can say it, it, it really would give a lot of um, boost to our mission, I think, in, um, in what we do here. So just basically thank you for the work that you put into it. Uh, thank, you, thank you for your comments. And there was one thing that we added in because we had to this year, and I was part of a large part of wanting to see it added was the transition if the charter passed and then the charter did pass. Because I think that it's important to us that the success of the town is what we're about, not the success of the select board and that uh, um, regardless of what happened, we want to see it going forward. I think the chair touched on it well, but um, I, I, it did take a lot of time. I know it took a lot of your time this year and um, if anything, it would be, if I was going to beef anything up, it would be along the lines of just saying even a little bit more mm -hmm. about the amount of time that it took to um, get the transition going as soon as the charter passed and to make sure that we were on the right path to getting from our current form of government to where we're going. And to add to what Mr. Steinberg said, and I think it is worth, in a way, highlighting that 
near the introduction. Um, you know, we knew that a transition was coming. We, we flagged that that's really important, but we didn't know we were going to have a bunch of legal challenges. I mean, each one of those things represents, you know, whatever efforts, bandwidth, hours, and back and forth, and town resources um, with council and others. So um, it was actually in some ways more arduous. Maybe we were naive. Um, because we had the dates challenged, we had a special act to do, we had change of a bunch of things that, and I think we were clear in our meetings that it was really important to this board to keep on track with that, and the manager and the other related staff did. So it's more than just you know the, the one line, transition to charter. There were a bunch of dramas along the way that we didn't anticipate. And I certainly, in my, you know, in, in writing that, particular piece, I, you know, I, I went back and forth about how do I capture that, you know, without it being, you know, 10 sentences. <laughs> but I, I can definitely make an effort to try to add a, a little bit more to that effect. I mean, I certainly wanted to touch on that, and, and, and that gets to that, that idea of, of what I had said in my own evaluation about, you know, things arising that sort of take you away from doing other work, and I think that that is an example. There were a couple of things that came up um, that that ended up taking time, and it's time well spent. But at the same time, it's, it was time not spent on other things. Um, so, you know, it's it, it want to acknowledge those things. Yeah. I think that's one of those things. One of those areas where the board, the board had the board listened to the voters. The voters spoke. The board. Um, took a leadership role in that and did not equivocate. There was no like, oh, should we, should we, you know, there was never, it was like, we know the direction that we're, we've been told to by the, by the voters. And I think that that sort of strength of leadership was really important for the work that we were doing, you know, to figure things out because knowing that was the direction and, and having the support and the direction of the board was really important to that, I think. That suggests at some point we go back through these 58 goals and star three of them at some point. I mean, and not not necessarily. Not. So not to be difficult, but we did look at a draft of goals briefly already, and we will look at that again tonight. And that is exactly what that was: is trying to pull out the things that we've talked about. So when we get to that section, it's. That is definitely something that we had discussed as a group and then saw a draft of, which is still not just three. It's more like 12. Um, and so if it needs to be three, it's going to be interesting. First but, um, it's be really third tier. Third tier. Whereas, I believe is the phrase. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore. Um, Here's somebody available to us. Here to, that's right. I do have copies of, of the most recent edition of that, which I will share with us if, but I, I do want to make sure that we have completed talking about the evaluation, so. So as I believe you indicated, aside from the, the sort of beefing up a couple of areas that we talked about, which are we still allowed to say with so many vegetarians at the table, but okay, beefing up um, sections of that, and then this will be available on Friday for us to review again. And um, and our meeting is at 8 or 8.30 on Friday. It is at 8 o'clock. Okay. And Double we will check. have, I think, two liquor licenses. So we'll start in this room, and then we'll go into executive session at that point. Well, we'll probably discuss the edits to this. and then Right, just in case you session. came up with some brilliant other thing that is not similar to what we've already talked about. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Wow. Nice try. I just want to make sure I had entered it at 8 and not 8.30. Right. I wanted to make sure it also said 8 and not 8.30 because I wasn't sure it was, it's not actually posted yet. And so I wanted to be 100% certain that my understanding was the adequate, was the accurate one. Right. Okay. Let me think of something else. Um, so it will get posted right. tomorrow. It looks like because otherwise, Wednesday. Other, or Showing very, very phone. early on Wednesday morning, then yeah, probably tomorrow to afternoon. Tomorrow. Or 8 o'clock. Yeah. All right. Right. But yes, it will, it will get posted tomorrow. 
just so we can get in those last minute liquor licenses. That's right. And we're being business friendly, trying to get people, you know, sort of off the ground and, and moving on with their, uh, with their, uh, with their businesses. Um, I think there was one other question I think I had for the board about this. Um, so I thank you all for taking the time to read through it and your kind words relative to my, my draft. And so I will make the uh, suggested edits and bring this Friday. Yes. So my question then is, and I may just be jumping ahead of what you were going about to say anyway, is would you prefer at this point that we talk more about the next set of goals or about the structure tips for the uh, for the future council? Are we gonna, are we going to get a chance to talk about both of those tonight? And I personally don't care when which one we talk about, but I hope we'll do both just because we're kind of all enmeshed in it now. I am open to either, so I'm, it's okay. the board's pleasure as far as whether they prefer to. Since we're talking about this structure and how that might compare to, to a future structure, maybe that will be the place to start and have a little bit of a conversation about and then you know, sort of advice we would give and then we can come into the, the goals because that's about sort of where I think we go in the next few months with the manager. And so process a little bit, maybe we should continue that with having suggestions for our coming council. So yes. if we're going that way, then the notes I already made, beyond the things that everybody, not everybody, may not have captured them perfectly, just said, um, but some notes I'd made prior to that are, you know, if you were using a form like this and you were making an X, uh, you would want to sort of force people to answer a question rather than letting it be blank, because we, we all run into that sooner or later because the format is difficult. But then I have point two, don't use this format. <laughs> So problem solved, which which also relates to the, the conversation about if you do use something like this, we talked about what does commendable really mean, what does satisfactory really mean. We talked in several ways about the fact that we might say the exact same thing in a sentence but come up with two different ratings. So like what does that even mean? And it, would, it wouldn't be any different if it was a 4 or a 3 or a 7 or a 2.5 if the words are the same. And so maybe, you know, cautioning the future council that maybe, on the one hand, you don't want it to just be pros, right? You want to have some kind of categorization, but even we who've worked with this for several years now in a row still struggle with it ourselves. And like we're kind of all on the same page, even though we interpret things a little differently. So I don't really know the answer to that, but one suggestion that I thought we might come back to, and, and actually Mr. Bachman sort of touched on it, is now that we regularly do staff evaluations of department heads, um, what rating system that uses? I mean, we have no idea. I mean, we have no reason to know what that evaluation form looks like. But if there are parts of that that are particularly satisfactory, then maybe it makes sense for those to mesh to some degree, in terms of just how then department heads would hear from you the same way you would hear from the council in terms of. Readings. I don't like that word, but evaluation terms. Um, so that might be worth knowing because that's we've talked about how other towns do it, which means which is actually nowhere near as well as we do. Um, we are way ahead of the pack on this, but how do we do it internally that we could build on? I can make just one quick comment mm -hmm. on that. You know, talking about the ratings and how to make those categories sort of work for folks. And you know, in the education field, they talk a lot about norms. Um, you know. You, you find operating norms or rubrics for grading. So like when they're evaluating writing samples of kids mm -hmm. um, or if you get into companies that do testing, right. they often talk about, you know, how do the graders of the tests, you know, sort of um, consistently evaluate those things. Some of the, you know, thinking that people have done over time around that could be very helpful as far as trying to get uh, consistency around what each of the terms mean in which circumstances and what kind of terms are the right kinds of terms to even use to begin with but that's a, a potential mm -hmm. suggestion and there there are folks in town that know about that stuff because mm -hmm. <laughs> there are businesses that have been in town and near town that that do that kind of work all the time you know you were going to say about this work I, well uh i went to hampshire college <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and in graduate school i wrote an essay um about for the student newspaper about how embarrassing it was to be graded because it seemed to be 
you know, reducing everything to a grade seemed to be irrelevant to my professional, my coming out of the professional sector, going to graduate school, and then having somebody grade me was not was what I was about. I wanted to hear the feedback that people <coughs> were giving me, and so. But I also understand that um, that the public wants to know, you know, and the press wants to say, good, bad, great, average. You know, they want that little. They don't want to go through a Hampshire transcript that's 47 <laughs> pages long. They want to know what's what's the headline. And I think that also that's something we'll, you'll, I assume you'll talk about on Friday or whatever is the press release that will need to accompany something like this. Um, so I, I think that it's a hard one because you do uh, the first cho the forced choice method is one thing, but then having a, sh a understanding of what that means because right now, I think you're right. Satisfactory is that to me when I evaluate people, and we've had this in my previous organization. Everybody was excellent in one division, and everybody was average in that next. It wasn't like the divisions were that different. It's just the the person grading them said, I love everybody, they're great. And the other person was like, they're all doing their job, they're fine, you know? And it's like, they're all doing fine. So it's like, <laughs> if there's an agreement on what the metric is or the rubric is for doing that. Um, yeah, so, uh, that's why I'm saying that. Okay. Other thoughts at the moment about what we might offer to the incoming council? Well, um, I think in some ways that New Council is going to have to come at this in a fresh way. We, we have something that works for us, and I think it's building the goals that in some ways is as challenging or as important as, you know, eight to 12 months later, evalu using them as an evaluation tool. And I think as the Council gets familiar with each other and their job, they're going to have to review the goals and, and kind of own them and make them their own. Otherwise, um, as we've found a couple of years back without um, good goals, it's pretty hard to, to make the evaluation form work. Or if they don't, at one point ours didn't mesh. Right. Um, so I don't know, I mean this is a great sort of set of samples for them to build off of, but I think they're almost gonna have to take the Lego thing apart and rebuild it in order for it to make sense to them. Mr. Steinberg. I have a couple of thoughts. One is that uh, it's really hard to devise a system because even if we were, you know, continuing as a select board and there was not being a change, <laughs> there's two circumstances that can change this entire dynamic of how this goes on. One is wholesale dissatisfaction with the performance of a future manager, and the other is. Um, one or two members of the elected select board who have a totally anomalous view from everybody else. And I think we've seen it in other boards and committees in town, uh, but it's uh, not one that I've had to deal with as a member of the select board, thankfully. Um, so, but any uh, system is gonna have to recognize that either of those can happen. Um, and, uh, the other thing that I uh, think we really need to uh, remind uh, our future council of is that what works for a five-person board doesn't work for a 13-person council, um, simply because uh, it's just a different um, set of circumstances for, to expect the chair to be able to pull together 13 uh, forms, even if they're generally consistent, um, is probably an impossibility. Five is probably, for the two of you who have done it, barely manageable. And- uh, I see five's plenty. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about the notion of doing thir having 13. It would take, them, it would take forever. And, it would take a really long time to do. And so you'd have to be getting less in order to do it or have something different. I mean, because you just, you know, the length of what we have done, if you had trying to put together 13 of them is impossible. And I think we should uh, recognize that for ourselves and for them. 
Sure. I do think that's important to point out to them. It certainly came up when uh, they were talking about the number of counselors at mm -hmm. Charter Commission meetings, and people kept saying, more, more, more. And I said, how are you guys going to do evaluations? Like, five is really hard, and regional school committees really struggled to give a useful evaluation, given the handcuffs that they're already provided by the state, et cetera, plus the wonderful public process. It's really, really hard, right. and it takes many, 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 many hours to do it as it is. Um, one of the other things I think associated with that that I'd like us to also feel like we could communicate to the council, and I'm jotting these notes down, I don't know who's writing this, because this isn't part of the press release, this is our separate you know, booklet of things to tell the future council. We're not, the, how do I wanna say this? We're on the same team right now. They're not going to be on the same team. They're still on Team Amherst, right? We talked about how important it, what matters to us is the community, not per se the select board, but is a different, literally a different relationship. They are not part of the executive anymore. And so um, I think they need to think about that too and to keep that in mind to not just think, I mean, the few of, some of them aren't familiar with town government at all, so not a problem. But for the ones that are, to not think of themselves as one of a 13-member select board, because they ain't. They're the legislature instead, and that sounds just like, well, sure, whatever. But like, how do you compare that? Well, we've never, we've asked town meeting members for input to the evaluation, right? And we occasionally get some, but that's a very different animal. And so that, I think, including that in our explanation of, why we also think that trying to reuse a form that was developed together as part of the same branch, whereas I certainly hope they work very closely with the town manager on an appropriate evaluation form, the relationship's just not the same. The hiring relationship is very similar, but beyond that, it's not the same. The, um, when I had the conversation with my friend out at KU, um, we were talking about that and when I had the similar conversation with the select with the council member in the city that I was talking to which was about our size uh, the, the process generally runs along the lines that the chair of the body whether that chair be an elected mayor or otherwise um, has a little bit of a larger role in actually doing the evaluation and getting input from other members of the elected body because, you know, most communities have a council manager form of government. And whether there's a mayor who's chairing of the council or an elected chair of the council, and since that's the largest. Uh, number of types of governments and percentage in the country. I mean, there's plenty of models out there, and I think that that, I gather, is what the common approach is. And then, of course, they have one advantage in most places that we don't have, which is that the chair would then sit down with the rest of the council in executive session yes. to talk about <laughs> exactly. it, said, here's my proposed evaluation and then they talk about it in an executive session, mull it out, you know, put, come up with where they're gonna be and then it gets put together um, and put out um, as the final evaluation. Um, but there is a role, I mean ultimately it is a role of the entire council to in some way participate in that even though it's done in that fashion. Uh, so I think that it is something that the council is going to have to wrestle with how to go about doing this, um, but they are going to have a role. Um, it, it's sort of inevitable in the construct of the government um, because who else is going to do it plus, the, as we say, it's in the charter. Yes. The other part, I think, we if we could work in a sentence along uh, associated with that, is also 
just as we touched on earlier when we realized the year that we had a complete dis we were having a disconnect between our form and the goals that we did developed nine months before then and then went to fill out the form and went wait what um is as they adopt goals which you know we're going to hand them one set and say this is what we asked for for the last couple months while we were here you guys do what you want but um they need to be thinking about those two things at the same time so they don't necessarily have to come up with the final format while they're thinking about the goals, but they need to be thinking, if we're setting this goal, how are we going to figure out? They, they pair. Who's sure. going to measure it? They pair right. together. How, how does it pair? How do they measure it? And so I know, I hope they will listen to you explain that to them at length, Mr. Bachman, because I know you understand exactly what we're talking about. And I think that a lot of them, because of the limitations of open meeting law and maybe having served on a board before where you're just sitting in a quiet room talking to your executive director, a very different scenario. And so um, I think that would be super helpful to, to recognize that they should definitely be talking about it's one thing to say we have a goal, and that sounds really pretty, but what are we going to do with that when it comes time to do the evaluation? So perhaps a segue to goals from that last point. Um, I've got copies uh, which I'll hand to you guys. I'm going to put these away for... Because I, yeah, yeah. I, I sort of collated them in a weird way. We don't have enough clips. So, so what I'm handing to each of you is a small packet of... Um, on top is the, um, the changed version, and then underneath is a redline version of the most recent. Um, so we had a conversation last time, I think, Subsequently, that was sent to. Um, subsequent to our conversation, I think it was last week, uh, the following day, Ms. Brewer had made some additional edits, I think, based on our conversation and sent those. They're in blue. So if you pull out the red line version, there's like. I need to put the They're blue lines. That we just got. Uh, so we got the red line before, and now there's blue line. Right. And that's and the ads from the ads from last, last meeting. meeting. Yeah. And, and then, then here's the, the nice clean Yeah, line. the top one is the, right. the, the, the sort clean, of clean version. It, if these had all been accepted. Right. And so if you let me take a few moments to look over the red slash blue line version. Only 24 <laughs> shirt. <laughs> Showing great discipline. Well, less than half of them. Exactly. It's progress. October and November, one quarter of the year.
looks as though everyone's ready. Ms. Brewer. So if I could just um, reiterate something I said mostly last time, which is that, as you noticed, there's no red after page two because I didn't touch the rest. It's just the same as it was, and it's just FYI sort of thing. Um, part of the reason I chose the things that, I mean, I mostly chose things we directly talked about and others I just inserted um, in, the, in the first page and a half is that I wanted to make sure we captured things that we knew were likely to happen. Like, oh, look, we've already done the MassWorks grant application, yay. But if we didn't call them out here, probably wouldn't get, potentially would not get captured by the future council and were too late for our evaluation. So sort of, you know, hit the ground running in terms of look at all that's already been accomplished in these in these ensuing months in between, because I know these are things that are being worked on and are probably going to get done anyway, as opposed to us saying, ooh, here's a brand new thing you never thought of before. I'm hoping that that's what this mostly captures. In fact, I even thought about saying something about four boards in there, and I was like, nah, I'm not even going to go there, because right. we're so used to that, plus the budget process does change under the charter, and however, that's part of the transition plan. But I wanted the things I called out were things that I actually largely thought could be accomplished, e even though some of them will just be telling us, this is how far we got on this. And then it'll be up to the town manager and the council to work out what the next definition of that goal will be. Senator? Yeah, I have several thoughts. But first of all, I want to thank Ms. Brewer for doing the work on keeping this going on this. Thank you. Um, I also have to say as a matter of some humor as I was going through this again, got to relationships with select board, almost was willing to put in an asterisk, maintain a professional relationship with us despite the fact you know you'll never be evaluated by us again. <laughs> <laughs> Not to put too fine a point <laughs> on it. Uh, but um, aside from that, getting back to uh, some other things, uh, the uh, um, on, and I'll just go in order now on um, page two under a. Are you working from the red or the? the I'm working from the. The red one. Okay. That's where I took my notes. A3, which is on page two. Uh, you put in including updating select board after the regional school district planning board. Uh, that seems superfluous because everything we're saying should be um, keeping us informed. I was wondering if we're going to pick one of the entire group out, why that one? So, if I may, mm -hmm. so the first one under long range planning says update select board on continued implementation of the charter transition plan. That's because that's what we want. We don't want a charter transition plan that includes four items in it that somebody tells us is done. We want to know, tell us some stuff that you're doing associated with the charter transition plan that you're glad that we're making progress on or that you're frustrated that we're not making progress on. And so then ensuring coordinated planning is basically, there might not be anything to do in, an, in one of these upcoming months prior to December associated with that particular thing. So it could just be, you know what, nobody's working on this, everybody's taking a break until January on this. And that would be fine. Whereas if we just left it at as ensuring the part without including updating select board, it would just, then the answer would be, well, no news is no news. So my idea, most of these are in fact, I'll say some variation on updating the select board, propose something to the select board, tell the select board something, just kind of so we know what's going on, and then other things are more like actually do it. So I saw it as more similar to A than, than not, and B, same thing, Fort River School feasibility plan. He could say, I'm doing, staff is there, and they're doing the work they need to do. Well. I think we've already made clear in the evaluation that we need some more information so that we can help the community come along on that process. And that may just be a simple verbal update or it may be a memo or something at some point in the next three months. So that's how I saw 
what those words meant. So if they need to say something else or mean something else, that's what I was trying to get at. I guess that uh, in, a, in a, not perfectly fine with leaving it, but um, when you get to on page three using this version, um, after fiscal management and relationships with select board, number two, um, number one, providing regular communication to select board about matters relevant to their responsibilities and concerns. But, it's such a, that's a blanket. But see, these aren't our goals. The only thing we're asking them for is the short term. We're only going up to page two. Mm -hmm. We're done after, pay, after 5G. The rest is just of the current select board for consideration by the new town council. That's why I said, what I should have said is stop reading after a turn, <laughs> it stops okay. being read because I didn't expect us, I don't think those things any longer apply to what's happening with the town manager over the next three months. I think the things at the beginning apply. Well, Andy, I know you have a list, but just on that point, yeah, no, it's maybe, if this really is, in a way, it's a, it's a working document for us for th the next three months, but it's also sort of a letter to future right. council. Maybe where that break is, there needs to be, and maybe that is in this red B. Um, this for consideration by new town council. Maybe that just, maybe it's just hard to read because it's red underlined, but some way to make it clear that these are what we already had and we're, we're hoping they could be useful, but um they're really not the focus of this document is really the short term for use by the select board uh, it does say less applicable to town council expectations do the different nature i don't know just make sure that that's really clear kind of what you just said in plain english like stop reading unless you <laughs> some or, guidance from us or, yeah or, or I, I think with the way you stated it, First is fine, um, though it does then beg a question that I have on one other section. If we recognized as we did the evaluation that there was a weakness in the way we worded goals before, if we're not going to pay any attention to the wording that we're putting forward after, after the dotted line, so mm -hmm. to speak, right, right. Below then we don't line. get there. And I'll give you my very specific example so that uh, you know, and that is when I was doing the evaluation and we were on V, Community Intergovernmental Relations, um, and then there was, wait a minute, let me just make sure it was the right one. Uh, yes, and then um, we had, um, developing partnerships and strategies through regular meetings with Amherst College and Hampshire College, we didn't treat UMass the same way. We kind of uh, put UTEC in there. Mm. Well, UTEC is kind of, useful. it's only as useful as UTEC turns out to be. And it seemed that there was a missing piece that something along the lines of the way that B and C are stated should have been also included for the university. I don't disagree. I will say that the reason my, I didn't ask for that sort of parallel in those is because A applies to only to the university. It doesn't have anything to do with Hampshire and Amherst College to a huge degree, except maybe for when Amherst College brings in their um, reunions. And we were trying to be, and so I see what your point is though, to make it, to make it clear that, that, that some are talking about UMass, some are talking about all three, and some are talking about them separately. And so I wonder if, um, could, what, what would be the best, I don't want to change this document. And so I'm wondering, I mean, from that, for that purpose, I'm thinking maybe that makes more sense. Does that make more sense in our cover where we're talking in the composite we were just talking about in terms of the limitations we realized we faced as we did the ratings? Or does it belong in our evaluation tips for the future sort of document? Because I'm loath to go in and 
touch the 18 goals, but I also want us to show our learning of what we just realized about our 18 goals too. So, so there are two, two sections that I was wondering about as well on 5C um, and 5E where you're asking for the manager to propose appropriate relationships between the town and UTAC and then propose relationships between the town council and uh, the CCC. Yep. And I was really not clear if you wanted sort of like, oh, what should, what's, uh, like for the 5E, um, e, that would seem actually more logical to come from the board members who are serving on CCC uh, in some ways than, than the town manager saying this is what it should be. But I, was, I just needed more clarity on what you meant by that. I think I was that the was one yours. who added that. Um, <laughs> just for example, the CCC has scheduled meetings through, I think, November. They just set out a schedule for November 2018 and then starts up again in January. Well, I won't be representing the town on the CCC. So working with the council to decide how the council, if at all, wants to be represented on the CCC. I can't speak to Mr. Steinberg, but our our membership there is as representatives of the town on the select board, and so we, in a sense, disappear. So what would be the process or the relationship going forward? We just wanted to flag um, these other members, yeah, that we're members of, so we could give point, you know, we'll pick somebody like this or send so-and-so, they'll make them crazy, whatever. But. Um, so we, we can might give advice, but we saying. won't be that representative um, in that way. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting question as to how some of those things, and this is a good example of, and there are probably going to be many mm -hmm. that are going to, going to come along. Uh, on the CCC, though, you also have uh, the uh, captain from the police department, uh, Captain Gunderson. Gunderson. You have somebody from the fire department. You have the uh, public health director, who are also members of the CCC. Is the town going to, in the future, be represented by um, staff, or we, or should somebody from the council also be on it? And yeah, so does question. that become a volunteer thing? for two members of the council to raise their hands, or is it something that you should take a larger leadership role in doing it? It probably is worth some, yeah. some thought. Yeah, I agree. Well, I think <laughs> is what we were talking about, I think, yeah. Well, and I think also, I mean, there's others, uh, you know, who represents us at PVTA is another example, mm -hmm. or the MPO, which, you know, traditionally it's been either the manager or someone from the select board being an executive branch person. Sure. Um, at, you know, the, for example, PVTA, you don't, you know, you're a designee, so it doesn't matter. You can you can pick somebody, mm -hmm. literally anybody off the street if you chose to. But but it's beneficial to have people that are there that also then are plugged in regularly with the right. you know town government mm -hmm. and budgets and things like that. So, um, we probably missed a few. So uh, you were on, you were on your list, Mr. Sim, but there was one area that I thought we missed, and maybe I'm just not seeing it after reading all of these and then reading the goals again, but in our evaluations tonight, we all um, identified the need one way or another to deal with the fact that there's four, maybe five capital projects on the horizon and needing to do that, but I don't see that in the short-term goals. Now, it's not, not gonna get, and I don't see it in the long-term goals, so we said it's really important to start working with the, um, you know, some kind of strategy to approach that, but I, I just don't see it in the goals. In the long-term goals. So Which we were our goals that we just worked on. Right, so, and, and I looked for it, and I, I probably it's, did it's, just miss it. It's under fiscal management. I, but um, I, would, I would say to move that to short-term under physical, not because it's gonna be done, but to make sure that that stays as an active item under, the, that's being worked on even as we speak. So I made a conscious choice not to put it there. So I'm making because, a conscious choice to ask because, that you put it there. <laughs> because we, these, I mean, you can decide that other things need to go away, but these 20 odd things that are here already 
are things that I thought we communicated or we indicated over other discussions were things that needed to be done before December. That's not going to get done before December. They're not going to stop thinking about it before December because we don't mention it in our 24 things because it's kind of like the overriding problem. But you can't do anything. Staff cannot do anything with that project other than coming up with some new spreadsheets before the council comes on board because they can't just come up with a whole plan on how to get the council on board with what they decided to do. I mean, it's gonna be a joint effort from day one. Whereas to me, these things are things entirely up to the town manager to do. So it's good to appreciate your thinking, but you're a person who authored this and now we're all commenting right. on it. So I think we're bringing different vantage points. Mr. Bachman earlier said it's really helpful to differentiate the things that are really our priorities. And there are, I believe, other things in here that probably won't get completed either. So in the in the interest of trying to underscore what we, th we select board, think are the priorities, I think that's one of the maybe three to five things I'd pull out of our evaluation. We can leave it over there in the long term. Don't need to read this part. It was ours. Forget about it. But I don't think it, it serves that goal well to leave it there. But um, other people on the board might have different opinions. I guess what I'm not understanding is I perhaps I did make I did in fact say that phrase earlier but I don't have any intention of it being true that they're going to ignore it because they're going to if, if they are useful town councilors they're going to read our evaluation which includes the goals which also will include this document as part of that and you know beyond the fact that everyone knows that these are the four focus I guess I would ask you then if you do want that moved or copied into it's not taken away from but it's copied into then the answer is not what the current goal is the current goal is develop strategy and provide leadership to implement funding that's that's not going to happen between now and December so what's another way of indicating that it stays in front but it's not that whole Can picture you where the citation is in the line. It's on page three of the red line under 2E. And so we've been carrying it in one variation or another. Page three, 2 Page three, 2 e. Yeah. Are you looking at the red line version? Yeah. Okay. yeah. You're on page three. Oh, two. Okay, wait a minute. I'm, there's a, I was looking at Roman numeral two. Sorry. I'm sorry, yeah. Just okay. regular develop number strategies, two. Develop strategy and provide to implement funding. So what I'm hearing that. is you're suggesting that if we if we bring that into the Concept. short term, then what, it needs to be more what do we call finely it? articulated yeah. to, to make it something that can be actually accomplished. Um, so maybe more something, some particular aspect. Um, proposed approach so that for working on this, um, I, I don't know, but I just, two, two E, it's sort of, it looks a little lost. I think that's, I mean, if we're really going to kind of try to pull out what we think are the highlights. So, I mean, one of the things that the council needs to decide is, is, is there agreement that these are the four major capital projects or might the council say, we don't care about a DPW facility or a fire station or whatever it is that whatever they don't care is. about. Yeah. And so don't develop a plan with that in play right now we've you know, the town through the select board has articulated right. these as the four major and sometimes we say there's a fifth or yep. a sixth yes. um, but f the first conversation is do we have an agreement what the what are the major capital projects uh, in the next decade that we want to address and that's the big issue it, it's I mean, it flows from the capital improvement plan you know so we do have a process that has been involved but you sort of re want to reiterate those values from this from the council I think um, then where we talk about transition planning, does the transition planning have something that says what, you know, what are the top three things that need to be brought to the council, you know, early? Mm -hmm. um, because we think, or we all agree, including the mayor, that those are an, yeah. the most, you know, those are really be important one. because there's a lot of bureaucratic stuff that they have to do and how are they going to do appointments. But to me, that that's a, such a seminal question for that group. So um, maybe that's where it goes. Which So does it fit more under on the red line version on page two where it says long range planning and up, 
A says update select board on continued implementation of the charter transition plan, specifically well, including. Then I think there should be two or there. three things under there. What we yeah. we think are the most important for transition planning. The council might not agree with us. As it opposed to the kind of transition yeah. planning that's make sure we know how to set the tax rate given the timings off. Of yeah, the way but, we you know, set the tax it, rate. Room or I mean, that's to me that's not as important well, but as setting the tax rate right. is no, important I didn't say that <laughs> right and maybe that maybe that is one of the three things that come up first in the transition plan what I'm saying is that's already called out in one right. so right. do you want to call it out as a separate thing under fiscal management then instead or I mean I don't care obviously you're, there's a I mean you're much more familiar with it. where the things are I guess what I'm trying to understand is what is it Reflecting back to what I said earlier, and, and Mr. Slaughter tried to say, what is it that we're, that we're, instead of the wording, develop a strategy and provide leadership, it's more along the lines of one of the very first things you're surely talking to the council about is, and then as Mr. Brockelman said, he, you know, they have to all agree that those it's obvious to us those are the projects, but that may not right. be obvious to the council. Maybe part of my confusion is 3A, update select board on continued implementation of the charter transition plan. We don't actually have a charter transition plan. We Just because we haven't board. seen it doesn't mean we don't, that doesn't exist. <laughs> well, maybe it's on we, the agenda. Okay, so maybe we do, and maybe then it's charter transition plan, capital T, capital P. Yet I didn't know what it was called. I just figured there was one. Well, you can, that's generic enough. Charter transition plan to, you know, to include identification of priority issues, including capital planning. And if you guys have some other ones, pack them in. So, yeah, you can go there. I think it fits in but there. We don't, yeah, so we're saying, yeah, we want to see that transition plan in, in that, identify priority it, policy areas, you know, not the nitty-gritty. Charter transition plan that identifies priority policy areas policy and planning areas and then I just thought of that one but that probably is broad enough to cover all of it okay. besides I had to change something for example <laughs> but mm -hmm. okay mr. timber did you have other Things that you wanted to offer. I mean, well, you there, there are two clear. things that I know that need to be worked on, and I believe that Mr. Bachman is going to work on these, whether we state them or not. Why we're um, whether we disappear from them until we go out of business is the question. One is the beginning of the FY20 budget process, um, which is going to happen with a meeting which we are a part of um, in October when projections are spent are sent out and uh, a process is engaged with the soon to be defunct finance committee to establish uh, guidelines for the libraries and the schools as far as their budget expectations so that there can be work that begins similar to all prior years. The other one is that he, uh, we've been informed about and we would hope continues is the um, first floor administration staffing planning. Uh, I don't think that, but that is uh, manager's responsibility. It's not our responsibility. In prior years, we'd just say, go forth and, uh, Keep us informed. So I'll have more to report on that at the next meeting, but it does lead me to the question on, an, on, on 4A, where it says, while planning for new hires to be confirmed by the incoming town council, I don't understand that phrase. I mean, I understand the words, but um, review our policies and procedures to promote hiring and retention practices. Um, I guess I'm not really sure what what that well planning for new hires means exactly so I tried to pick that up from our current goals mm -hmm. where we all said in one fashion or another some variation of 
we don't have any written plans that we that we're aware of around diversity hiring and how we might more creatively address diverse hires and different people brought up different issues associated with that but given that we have major hires that are about to happen just like we already had a couple of major hires and we're we remain unaware of substantial focus on how we're going to improve the diversity of our hiring process that it seemed like the right moment to mention that as an ongoing goal because we asked about diversity we didn't necessarily feel like we got it thus far and that's why it's in there because there are new hires that are the ones that you're going to be doing probably very short term because they're ones that you've identified for a long time and we're waiting for the form of government to change and various issues mm -hmm. but then any other additional new hires you're going to have to be it's it's part of the being prepared for the fact that right now you hire whoever you want whenever you want to and the select board has nothing to say about it that won't be true with the council so given that we've identified here the need for some focus on how we can address diversity in different ways because the things that generic towns are doing isn't working to increase diversity it's not certainly just an Amherst problem, it's just an Amherst value. Um, to be prepared not for the fact that that's gonna be a much more public discussion going forward and also right now, our, if, if there are things, I mean, we talked about the charter transition plan, there may very well be things you're doing right now that we don't necessarily know about, but they haven't come out as part of the evaluation process. And we've said maybe there's growing people in house, maybe there's advertising a different way. I mean, kind of all the standard things people always throw around us. We don't know how to solve this problem, but that's what I was just trying to capture that moving over because it's not, if you weren't planning to hire anybody right now, then who cares? But you've got a new hiring process coming up and you've got hires you're actually probably going to make before the council shows up so they won't be subject to that. And just not losing sight of the diversity needs we've identified. So maybe I pulled over the wrong wording, but that was what I was trying to accomplish. I guess what I was trying to understand is, well, planning for new hires to be confirmed, I was, it felt like it was saying, why you put everything on hold until the council gets, I, I wasn't really sure what that, while well, planning for new hires to be confirmed, but you're just saying, don't forget to pay attention to our goal about diversity and, and that as a value. Right, and like if you have anything, if you, see, as far as I'm concerned, you might not hire anybody else right. until after the council comes in, because even if you really want to, you might not find the person you're looking for. And so that's part of what it is, is that we're just in this awkward place where we, we feel like we haven't really met that goal yet, mm -hmm. but we don't really know what it should look like. <laughs> I'm not sure we know how to evaluate when we've met it or not, except we know that our workforce will look slightly different than it does now. Um, and so we can certainly come up with different wording there if that's too focused on future council thing. But what I was trying to get at is I don't know when these hires are going to be made and they might be before and they might be after. And there's going to be something new anyway. I think on that one, maybe a little, just to tighten the wording up a little so it's clearer, but I, I reminded me that I did want to say something about the diversity issue. It's in the evaluation. Um, and I think it's, um, it is a community goal, value, and I think we all share it. But it's also a very difficult one. Every institution that I've been part of, organization, um, I know the academic institutions, the ones I'm familiar with around here, um, struggle with this. And um, it's often not for lack of trying, not saying the trying has been perfect, but um, to just lament, oh, the composition of, the, of town staff doesn't look like the composition of the community and then sort of flagellate ourselves again and again because we haven't made it look that way. Um, I, I'm not sure how, I'm not saying that's what you, you did in writing this, but to get into a, a more constructive place, like maybe getting some help with coming up with specific diversity and higher 
best practices. And maybe we already do that, and I just don't know. And that that's, you know, of course, what HR has been doing all along. But to articulate that to the community and to the council, that this is how we try to have a workforce that reflects our community, we may not succeed for this, a variety of reasons why that happened, ha hasn't happened even in these other institutions where they sometimes devote many resources to making that happen. So um, it, it's hard to not get defensive when you're in a meeting or in an event and they say, well, look at the town and it's not doing this or all the people in the room are of this composition. And you say, but I, I did A, B, and C and it didn't get me the result I wanted. So maybe part of this goal is coming up coming at it from a different way, whether that gets success or not, but a way to articulate it to the community so they understand I think, how well, seriously I think, we do work at that. I think one of the things that organizations struggle with is that the, the supply side of the, of the equation doesn't have, at present, the number of candidates. You know, that's, that's, that's not to say it's a, you know, that can be a cop out on, on you know, why you didn't do what you did, but at the same time, it's, it's also real. And so that's also understanding what the market is for candidates, um, you know, is, is an important part of that conversation to say, you know, we did X, Y, and Z, but also we've also looked at sort of, you know, in the broad context, you know, what is, what is the actual pool of, of capable people and, and, interested people and et cetera, et cetera. So that's a part of that as well. And so that's, you know, what some organizations are doing is actually working on the pipeline process. In other words, engaging with, with you know, uh, universities to pr promote and, you know, foster, you know, more people coming out of school with X credentials kind of thing. But, um, but I think that the, what I'm hearing out of both of the, both folks here is, is that we want to articulate that in a way, and and I think that, <clears throat> with regard to what's on the on the page there, I think the the difficulty is is right. The timing is one, but it's also that given that there are things in the new charter that require uh, confirmation by the council, I think having a sense of that as part of the transition planning, you know, it's like oh, we're here's how we're pre preparing to you know put these kinds of things in front of the council. Yes. I mean, I would suggest that you just start with the word review because I think it's a high enough value that you've articulated both in my evaluation but just okay. in general. Just cut out that And say, oh, we want sense. an update on this before we leave office. What do you do? What's your plan? What's your, what are you doing? I mean, one thing, you know, within the last three weeks, I've had a conversation with the uh, library director and she was bemoaning, you know, we talk about diversity and she says, you think you've got problems. Libraries are notoriously bad on diversity. And, so she, um, we talked about what she could do, and one thing she did is went over to the school district and talked with the people in the school district because they're really good, actually, I think pretty good at uh, attracting and recruiting a diverse uh, work, a diverse applicant pool. So she's trying to take tips from them on things that they could do. So I think um, what this does is it elevates it to a primary part of our conversation uh, for the select board before you leave office, will you want an affirmative conversation about what are we doing with this? I think that, that answers it for me. That answers my question at least. So would it work to say under for staff and personnel relations, A, just cross out that first line altogether and insert update select board on policies and procedures to promote? because that scans with everything else. Yep. So you're updating us on, hey, yep. sure. we've been talking about Absolutely. it, we're gonna keep talking about it. That works. Just, um, yes, I had flagged a while back, just when I was making notes on under 5G, similarly, proposed ways of increasing diversity in committee membership, as you will be appointing most committees with confirmation by town council. And there I kind of, maybe I was, like overthinking, but we we use diversity a lot, and it doesn't always mean the same thing. So, are we talking about diversity in racial background, um, socioeconomic, different identities, or opinion? Because I've I've seen a number of candidates make statements about diversity in meaning diversity of opinion. Wow. So, I it I mean I like the word diversity, but I think in that one, increasing diversity in committee membership. Um, it still means different things to different people. 
where I think in higher, we're probably more talking about racial. Uh, well, so I'd look at language diversity, too, so we can serve more people. Right. Mm -hmm. So maybe we want to sp spell out, you know, EG and <laughs> the 20, 20 con I, don't, I don't know. It just I got hung up on that one. So I'll give you my document if you want to write diversity of thought on it, because I am not putting that in. <laughs> You're going to have to put that in purple or green or something, because I am not writing diversity but, but of thought. Do, that just it makes but, me insane. But I hear exactly that's what, what you're saying. Mean there are people who say that. And I think part of the reason I went ahead, even though, again, we tried generally not too much to refer to the council in these goals, is that what's different as it has been the select board appoints a ton of committees right now. and it's been on us to find more ways of, of managing that diversity, which we have you know, done to the degree that we've done. But it's, it's like totally not our problem anymore. It's really <laughs> our problem now at this point. And so um, any ideas that have been perking, now would be a good time to hear about them. just. In that instance about the committee diversity, did you mean it in the same way when, as when you yes. were looking at the goal for hiring? Absolutely. Okay. You didn't mean younger people if it's an older committee. You're talking about racial and uh, No, I'm talking, about, I'm talking about all. I'm talking about all the issues. Race, all age, class, social, gender. Social, sexual yes. orientation. All the things the identity. select board would, yeah. and you were all looking at already in okay. committee membership to be able, I mean, Partly to some, again, this is uh, taking credit for things we're already doing, but maybe being able to articulate them a little better, that we've been able, we've been trying, we will continue finding new ways to try, but that we appreciate that this is an ongoing issue, especially as, you know, as the whole process changes. So. Will you make some? Yeah, I'm, I have notes on edits. those two. Basically, on those two, to part the part about long range planning with the charter transition plan that identifies priority policy and planning areas, for example, major capital projects. <clears throat> and the staff and personnel relations, A, just cutting out that first line and saying update select board on, were the two that I finally came to the conclusion about. And the other one was. Uh, just to go back and take a look at what is really this, the paragraph that is the last in red, and whether there's, ah. there's any way to um, clarify that, that. Clarify. Just what the transition is. A little bit more. Okay. When you, when you want this back on the agenda for Friday? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, mm -hmm. do it tomorrow. Then we can just dispatch yeah. it. Yeah, we might be able to confirm it because sooner the better in some respects because the clock's ticking right <laughs> and we should probably call it out specifically in the yes. list of topics yes. as that we're gonna try and approve the goals <coughs> <laughs> if people feel ready to approve them after they look at them again I don't know that I'm gonna be able to come I'm gonna have to google again how to make yet another color show up okay. you know I was I was going to recommend we just do a final copy based okay. on this conversation I don't think we need to get into the weeds on redlining you know, you might want to say if you, you know, go to these three places, that's what I did based on our home. Let's, let's not go through this level of um, detail. I, I think we're done with it with our comments. So <laughs> final, a final black and white. Yeah. Blue letterhead, if you like. Purchase changes. And thank you. Appreciate the work on that. Um, because it seems so simple, but it's not. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I just tried to copy some things over. <laughs> right, exactly. It's like, I think of half a dozen things we can get done in the next no, month or two. That seems simple. like it. All right. But well, thank you again. And um, so actually, just speaking of that, I think, um, was there anything you wanted to mention to us this evening? I, we didn't generally necessarily any member reports that anybody had to share with us. Um, if not, I'll just touch base we are meeting at 8 a.m. I believe in this room mm -hmm. because we have a couple of liquor licenses yes. that are before us before we finish the manager's um, evaluation um, and then after that our next two meetings are on Wednesdays 
uh, the 5th of September and the 12th of September. Mm -hmm. Just a little out of the ordinary, but the uh, holidays of varying kinds and uh, are coming into uh, play in September, so that in impacts our schedule. Um, and so, unless there's something else, I think we're ready to adjourn. Unless I yes. actually have a question about, and I am imagining that Mr. Steinberg is more familiar with this section of the charter than I am. I actually don't know why we're having a four boards meeting associated with the budget. And I, I mean, I love the four boards meetings. They're wonderful. But I, I'm just not sure why we're having one, given how much of the budget process has changed in terms of its timing. Is it because we, th is it more for the public education aspect of it? Or I mean, I, it doesn't feel to me like it should be the same as previous years. So I'm just trying to understand what we're doing. I would suggest, and, and maybe Mr. Steinberg, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll, my thinking was is about that was that we still want to, so there's a couple of things that we, we do at that meeting. One of the primary ones, though, is, is uh, make our best guess is what we think the revenue for the coming year is going to be. So I think that's a good thing to have out there as early as we always do. Do I think that you know the Finance Committee will make budget guidelines and that we'll have our own budget policy guidelines? No, I don't think we'll do either of those that have traditionally followed that meeting. But I do think painting the picture of what the you know, state of affairs is mm -hmm. re relative to uh, what we think our budget might look like from, from a revenue standpoint and expenses standpoint is a good thing to sort of frame, even though the election won't have happened yet. I'm going to take the next stab and then turn to Mr. Bachman and to add to it um, if he feels he needs to. But we're, we are in a transition period, and but at the same time, transition means you want to keep going. You can't stop. And so you need to have the superintendent and the library director begin to develop budgets. And... Uh, the town manager has to begin to develop a budget for the municipal departments for the next year. And uh, so you need to get those projections as you would on a ge generally the same timetable because it has to do with the state fiscal year in the end uh, when it comes down to it. We're still, you know, a year is a year. It's going to go on. And... Uh, the um, so then it comes the question is well how does uh, the superintendent for example know how much money to put into the budget what's the bottom line needs guidance and uh, the um, uh, you know I've, I've talked with Mr. Bachman about this and he's given some thought about how that process can go forward in an orderly way and the guidelines from a finance committee probably will look nothing like they have in previous years because they're very different function but on the other hand they have the expertise and they can play a valuable role and i think that's what's being thought about so that sort of gets you back to all of the boards except us. So if you want to have a three board meeting, have us not participate, <laughs> that would be an option. But it would be good for us to give guidance and to be able to sort of speak to the municipal needs, even though we're not going to be here when the budget is presented. See, I'm seeing a real disconnect there because normally we just are get talked at at the four boards meeting. There's not any discussion. There's three questions, me and two finance committee members, one, or, one of which didn't hear the answer the first time, and then I asked something crazy, and then we're done, and we walk out of the room. So there is no, I mean, so if we're gonna do it differently this year, I just think we need to understand that. I understood, I assumed the part about finance committee really doesn't give guidelines. This budget process is different moving forward. Yes, it's a budget. Yes, you have to talk to department heads. Yes, people need to know what portions they have. But the reality is the process is different. The Finance Committee isn't going to give guidelines unless they were weirdly doing that for a budget they don't have any control over in the future, which I don't think meets with the transition provision. 
the budget coordinating group, I could see having a role in discussing, and, and that is largely those same bodies, right, just representatives from there, and, and so I could see potentially having a meeting of that before the transition takes place. But I don't see how, I do get the part about presenting what the trends look like. That totally makes sense to me in terms of it's a thing we always do at that time of year. It's a good thing for everybody to have going on, but it, it's not feeding the same machine that creates the budget. It's on a very different timeline with a different process. And so unless we're going to encourage this to be kind of like people's last hurrah at putting in uh, goals or something, I, I think I just heard we aren't going to be doing select board goals, and we don't normally do them in that setting at the four boards. So I'm a little confused. I'm going to take my own shot at it. Um, I think partly for the continuity to continue with the budget development process. And I think the four boards meetings, in my experience, it's, it's partly public education. It educates the members and whoever you know might want to listen in. And if I were running for council, I'd maybe want to, that might be a meeting I might want to listen to either on tape or be present for. So I think it has a public education function when you get some press and it starts to put out some of the thinking about the budget as the departments and others are preparing. And then hopefully that helps the council to transition. Um, I've never felt like that meeting had a whole lot to do with the guidelines per se. Uh, it's mostly presentation with a couple of questions. And I, I, I think it's important to kind of keep that um, form going for now. But maybe, maybe it's superfluous. I don't know. Yeah. The other thing is, is that it has been important in prior years that the library trustees and the school committees be there to hear the presentation about the financial realities. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, the they're going to get to the point where the development of the budget takes place and is presented by their chief executive, the library director, or the superintendent. And they're going to say, why isn't there more money? Why aren't you asking for more money? And you need a process that explains this is the reality and sort of gives some imprimatur to the amount of money that there that is being put in as the bottom line of that budget so that they understand at least what goes on. And I think if we're going to um, not do this process, we better come up with another one that is going to have equal credibility um, or I think that there could be a problem that is going to be, um, have to be dealt with by the council in its first year and I'm not sure that that is particularly um, a healthy thing to happen either. So I, my intention is to follow the sort of path we've laid out previously because I don't know how quickly the council is going to ramp up a finance committee and be ready to go. And also it fits into our timing. We're going to be doing our budget preparations along the same time frame anyway. I think there are already rumblings in different uh, departments that aren't under the select board about that same question about money. And I think having that shared expectation and, and also it's sort of an external discipline on us to get that work done and to share it out so that that's an important piece for it, piece for us to do. Um, that's, uh, and, but just in general, and we've been sort of following our same path for budget development. We're following, we, our, budgets guide, our budget schedule is similar to previous years. We're not saying, oh, we've got three more months to, to, to play around with. We might, up front, we're not gonna use that time up front. It might come in later when the council is educating itself and maybe we're doing more stuff with the council but at, at the beginning our budget development is going to happen this calendar year in terms of the internal staff hearings and things like that so what i'm still trying to understand then is i'm totally good as i think i said the first time with the educational part of it for the community they watch the tape they know what's going on and absolutely having it be four boards so they're all here rather than if they so happen right. to Same watch page. it so they're all really hearing the same source of information. I would just like to understand how we're making clear to those other bodies, meaning mainly the finance committee and the public, 
that the Finance Committee isn't writing guidelines this year and that the Select Board isn't writing guidelines this year because doesn't the Finance Committee sometimes meet right after the four boards meeting to start working on their guidelines except they're not gonna this year and do they know that? And so that's what I'm trying to understand too is, I mean, during this transition period, yep. it's like, who, who tells them that, <laughs> you know, exactly? Because all the information you're gathering is the critical part. Their part matters, but it matters differently this time from here on out. So yeah, I mean, that they, sounds like a chair to chair yeah. conversation. Right. To yeah. Me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Good point. I mean, I, yeah. Point taken. Well, the finance committee is going to have to act differently. When the finance committee has always written guidelines in the past, it has been. We would like you to develop a budget, Mr. Superintendent or Ms. Superintendent, with this bottom line for the elementary schools. We would like to have you uh, develop a budget for the regional schools with this bottom line with the assumption that this is what our uh, contribution is going to be by assessment. Uh, this year they can't really do that because they're not going to be the ones who are going to put the budget back together again at the end. On the other hand, they could say that we're going out of business, but based upon our experience, this is what we suggest might be an amount for you to consider, um, you and the town manager to consider, to give um, some additional guidance. Um, and in reality, the um, guidelines are um, always been the same as the dollar amounts that have been put forward in the projected budget is presented. That gets discussed, but it never varies. And uh, I wouldn't expect it to happen this year any different than it has any other prior year. Yeah, I think that in, what I'm sort of thinking is that the Finance Committee, if they offered guidelines, it would be advice to the, to the council. <laughs> it's really what it would boil down to, our, about which waiting. the council might like totally ignore, advice. much like our advice to them. Yep, our advice. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's valuable to, to sort of articulate it, though, because they do have that sort of experience of, of having gone through budgets for some time. So if that's true, and we're not going to try and convince them not to issue guidelines, then should we put a copy of our last set of guidelines in an upcoming packet so we can be thinking about whether or not we want to do some variation of it one last time, since the Finance Committee might be doing something one last time in its current <clears throat> format, or, and then we could at least look at it and then tell ourselves, nah, our goals cover it, or, and that's close enough, or yes, actually, this brings one particular issue to mind that we want to give future advice to the town council on. It could maybe be an easy way of addressing some of our future letter to town council stuff. One of the difficult things that the council is going to have to confront and deal with, um, as well as the town manager going forward, is that the regional budget still has to coincide with other town meetings of other communities. Otherwise, you have three other communities developing a budget, passing it, and then it's binding on the largest community without the largest community ever having a chance to participate about the process. We did think about that at the, when I was working with the Charter Commission. And uh, so it's not like you can make all of these other realities disappear, and that being a big one. Uh, not to mention the assessment method, which we've already talked about at nauseum. <laughs> Oops. So if there isn't anything else, which I don't think there is, I would take a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 We are adjourned at 8.58. Thank you all very much. We'll see you on Friday.